Autism is a development disorder that affects brain functioning. Its symptoms usually appear during the first three years of life. Individuals with autism usually have some of the following symptoms, speech and language difficulties. Some never learn to speak. Bizarre or repetitive behavior such as rocking or hand flapping. The Special Education Services of the Ministry of Education realize the importance of this suggestion as there are several children with autism enrolled in special education. A UNESCO-sponsored project called Early Intervention for Children with Autism and Other Developmental Disabilities was introduced last year. And this project, a UNESCO project, Autism Spectrum Disorder and Children with Other Disabilities, this project will help us to achieve all these goals in the ministry's white paper. And so we are happy to have you here participating in this first workshop under that program. One of the goals of the project is to identify children with autism and other development disabilities early. The first activity was the establishment of a committee to chart the way forward. It consisted of representatives from early childhood and special education. My name is Jacqueline Morris. I am the Director for Early Childhood Development in the Ministry of Education. So the Early Childhood Development sector was a part of the training program that occurred early this year. So the, the teachers from centers, early childhood centers um, around St. Kitts and even in Nevis were involved in training. The training took place for over a three day period. In addition to that, we met with parents in three zones in St. Kitts and in Nevis where they were sensitized to the, what the program entails and the benefit of the program to their children. We recognize that parents are key stakeholders in the whole process and so we recognize it was important that they were part of the process and what's happening with their children and we think that this intervention is going to really take early childhood education and development to another level of um, programming that will enhance children's wholesome development irrespective of their condition. The project's coordinator is Miss Clarice Cotton, Education Officer with Responsibilities for Special Education. In September, a consultant was hired. She is Dr. Lucy Jackson Liddy, who resides in St. Croix, USVI, with ties to St. Kitts. The consultant met with the committee in October to make plans for the way forward. She was able to introduce members of the committee to two testing instruments, the Ages and Stages Questionnaire, and the PEDS online test. The Ages and Stages Questionnaire can be used with children aged four months to five years, while the PEDS online test can be used with children up to seven years. Later that same month, the PEDS online test was introduced in St. Kitts. Children from the Cotton Farmers Comprehensive School were tested. The results were given electronically at the end of the test. In November, a group of persons representing the following institutions met to discuss the referral and testing process. One, special education. Two, health department. Three, early childhood development. Four, community development. Five, probation and children protection services. Each institution outlined its rules in identifying and working with children who are at risk. For the infants and toddlers, I have fear that um, we should receive the referrals, the health department, and I was thinking not only of public health, but the hospital as well, because some children, as soon as they're born, they recognize mm -hmm. that they have disabilities. So the maternity, nurses, and the, um, the doctors will be the first to recognize it. Others are identified when they go to the health centers, and they go to the clinics, or even by their doctors, their pediatricians, when they go for some sort of medical attention. I also have the cotton thermos because 
for many years we had the Optimum Chance team visiting once a year from New Jersey and they usually requested that they see infants and toddlers because in their agency in the US they these children who are identified early, they are referred to them and they work with them from an early age so that by the time they are ready to enter school, most of them are on time. The Ministry of Health was identified as the department that has the first contact with children who are at risk. The nursery and preschools were also likely to work with very young children. The Ministry of Social Development would provide support if families were in dire need or experiencing difficulties. The attendees at the workshop developed a memorandum of understanding, outlining the role of each institution in the referral, testing and placement procedure. It was decided that children under the age of five should be referred to the Health Center or Early Childhood Development Center. If they needed further evaluation, they would be referred to the Cotton Thomas Comprehensive School for testing and rehabilitated children over five would be referred to the Ministry of Education. I had the Ministry of Health should receive the referral as they would be the ones to, who are able to make a proper diagnosis right. to determine whether or not whether or not the child is developing slower than others or whether there's a more serious problem. Because some of us would find a child <coughs> It's very quiet and it's right now. We don't we find that children are supposed to get their first tooth at three three months or if we see six months now we find it's a problem if they don't walk or something. So I would leave it to the health department to yes. make the final decision because I'm not there. After that I had three to three years, then I had when the child reaches five years old, which is school age then they should be referred to the Cotton Thomas Comprehensive School. For self, what is my role for such social services? I said would be able to assist family with like food voucher and medical assistance. Mm -hmm. Then I said family may be able may not be able to afford the proper nutrition. So the health for health health reason. Mm -hmm. And then I even went on to say or oh, even a pregnant woman <coughs> can assist them during pregnancy so that they can get the, the proper nutrition for the baby's born. After testing, a multidisciplinary team consisting of persons from each institution would meet to discuss placement. If both parents refused to comply with recommendations for testing, the Ministry of Social Development would help to persuade parents. The completed MRU will be presented to top officials from each of the above ministries who will fine-tune and sign it. There was a two-day workshop for caregivers, including public health nurses, preschool nursery teachers, and special education teachers in St. Kitts. A similar workshop was held in Nevis later in the week. Representatives from Ministry of Social Development also attended the workshop in St. Kitts. The workshop started with a brief opening ceremony where Miss Cotton outlined the purpose of the meeting and Dr. Lucy Liddy Jackson, the consultant, gave the overview. The Ministry of Education secured a grant from UNESCO called um, Early Intervention for Children with Autism and Other Developmental Disabilities. During this phase of the project, we hope to train early childhood teachers, special education teachers, and public health nurses so that they would be able to identify children with special education needs. During the next two days of this workshop, teachers or attendees at the workshop will learn how to identify children who are at risk, how to do conduct simple online tests and a hard copy test to find out whether the children are functioning at their age level or whether there are gaps. We will also look at some strategies to deal with children who are falling behind so that when the caregivers leave this workshop, they should be well placed to identify children early and deal with them. I'm here today in the capacity of developmental delays at special education. 
I have a master's degree in special education. I've been working with people with disabilities for about 30 years. I'm a special ed teacher in the Virgin Islands, and I've also worked as a program manager for the Virgin Islands Department of Education School to Work program. I hold a graduate certificate in vocational special education, which focuses on preparing students with disabilities for independent living and for work and post-secondary education. So this is a sensitive area. People with disabilities, children with disabilities, students with disabilities have been neglected. And it's time we focus on them because it is in our hands to prepare them to be part of our societies and our communities. And my experiences working with this population have showed that yes, they can be independent and they can contribute to our communities. Um, when I was leaving St. Croix, there was a young lady I taught about 10 years ago who was at the Leah counter, and she's the one that served me. And I was looking at her and saying, I wonder if the customers and the employer know that she wasn't special ed. Um, the way she explained things, the way she greeted me, her whole attitude and everything was very professional, and she came out of special education. So um, it rests on us, the caregivers and the teachers, to mold these children. We have the greatest profession over all professions because we mold minds. We prepare the future. And these children are our future generation. And our survival rests in their hands. So it is very paramount that we take our roles seriously, okay? Um, the Autism Spectrum Project, funded by UNESCO and um, sponsored by the Ministry of Education, um, has been a year-long project. The first phase of the project entailed speaking with early childhood, um, the Ministry of Social Services and the Ministry of Education, specifically the special ed unit in the Ministry of Education. And we spoke about what, what are the concerns? What are the needs? What do we need to focus on? What is missing? We then met again and we looked at the disabilities, what is happening so far, what is missing? What is the referral process? How do we identify these children in the early childhood centers? And after they're identified, what happens next? No one knew what happens next. So we put a process in place, and um, the final um, document was the Memorandum of Understanding. And I think the ministries and agencies um, involved are now looking at that document to sign off on it. We established a referral process. After the child has been identified, they're then referred either to the Ministry of Education or either to identified persons within early childhood. They're then assessed or screened to determine what are their, need, their needs? What are the, the delays? What are the possible disabilities that the child might have? After the screening, then they're referred either back to early childhood or to the Cotton Thomas Center, which is a special ed unit. For rehabilitation, for further screening, the Ministry of Health is also involved in the process because from birth, I think six weeks checkup, these are things that the physicians and the nurses look for. What are possible problems with the child? Most of the screening that is done on the child is done through observation. We look and see how they're developing. How is the newborn developing? How is the four month old um, progressing? The six month old, the eight month old, the one year old? Uh, is the four month old smiling? with the parents? 
Um, is the 18 month old pointing at things? Are they saying um, two words? Observation is the key. And who does the observation? The family, the parents, and in the early childhood centers, the caregivers, the teachers. Okay? So there's a referral, there's a screening, and then there's a treatment if there's need for that child to receive rehabilitation treatment. It is very important that that treatment starts at an early age. As Ms. Cotton said, some of these delays might not go away, but there's some that can be corrected. We have autistic children who are in universities. We have children with learning disabilities, slight mental retardation, who's attending colleges and technical schools. We have mental retardation, physically disabled students who are in the workplace, who are given opportunities for employment. And this was all possible through the caregivers and the teachers. In Nevis, Ms. Violet Clark, head of the Special Education Union, gave the overview. Attendees at the workshop spent the rest of the first day moving from one workshop to another with the following facilitators. June Wallace, Early Childhood. Judy Gums, Rehab Therapy. Josephine Claxton Richardson, Behavior. The workshops were very interactive. Facilitators ensured that there was an opportunity for hands-on training. <laughs> The second day of the workshop, two screening instruments were introduced, the PEDS Online and Ages and Stages screening. Parents were encouraged to bring their children to be tested. There was once again hands-on training. Mrs. Charmaine Blanchard conducted the training on PEDS Online, while Dr. Jackson Liddy works with the group on Ages and Stages. Because it gives you the result, the answers, recommendations right away. Instead of searching, how am I going to work with this child? It will direct me to the doctor, the audiologist. What's the one that's majorly high? The PCI. Ophthalmologist and the therapist, the counselor, pets direct you to all the services that the child needs. Mr. Sylvester Doerr demonstrated how to use the internet and argumentative aids to find help for children at risk. The workshops ended with positive evaluations from all persons who attended. The team consisting of the above mentioned facilitators and the coordinator of the project met with parents every afternoon of the same week. During the workshop, the completed memorandum of understanding was presented to the persons who attended the workshop 
They suggested some changes, but felt it would clear up problems associated with referral and testing. What you've experienced yesterday, what is missing? What do you want to hear more of? Or what is your greatest concern that we haven't touched on yet? And someone's taking notes, so you could be sure we're going to address it. Teachers <coughs> should do that. But then it would be on the supervisor from me, you know, to make sure that it is being done. Very good. You know, I would like, you know, sign it, whatever they have to do. And you just pull up on the, on the teacher when they might. That's really it. Okay. She is a person who shouldn't insist that these are pulled up by the teachers. When it comes to the nursery, we also have a nursery supervisor. And they should be responsible to ensure that the nurse that it is filled out properly, even if some of the workers cannot do it, that there is some assessment done when the instrument is, you know, is So, Valerie Dolphin, early childhood unit, resource teacher. And since I said resource teacher, I will go from that end. So the resource teachers, four of us, we are assigned to a group of government and private centers throughout the island. We have a federation. Our role is to monitor and supervise to ensure that the program at the center level is being run properly. We do our share of assessment and we have our instruments that we work with as well. And we take back that information to the early childhood unit, the head office and we deliberate and then we go forward. The centers throughout the island, we have them in three categories. We have the nurseries, where we house children from birth to three years. We have the preschool children from three years to five years. And daycare centers, children from birth to five years. Now, each of these centers in the categories, each center is manned by a supervisor. And within the center you have, in the nurseries, in the nursery workers who work directly with the children, they are called nursery assistants, and sometimes we use the term caregivers. The preschool, teachers. Daycare centers, teachers, and nursery workers. So the assessment that an observation that should take place at the center level should be done by the persons who work directly with the children. So that's the, the teachers and the nurse workers. Parents came out in large numbers. There were more than 80 parents at the meeting in Sandy Point and about 100 at the industrial preschool. Meetings were also held at Kayon and Charleston. Parents were encouraged to check their children early so that if possible, problems could be corrected early. Parents asked for advice and about having their children tested. Since these meetings and the workshop, many parents have utilized the services of the early intervention team at the Cotton Farmers Comprehensive School. Today, um, you are sensitizing the parents the importance of observing children using, um, following the milestones, and we wanted to sensitize them to the need for early stimulation, early intervention so that we can, at a very early stage, we would be able to identify children who have developmental delays so that we can cater for their needs in a developmentally appropriate way. Tonight we met with parents. We are having some parent meeting to sensitize, sensitize the parents about the early intervention project. So we had speakers on the various topics, early childhood, milestones in early childhood, um, developmental disabilities. We also had a speaker um, who informed parents about what happens at the Cotton Thomas Comprehensive School and we had a presentation on behavior. The parents were very interactive, they asked lots of questions. 
and spoke about problems they have observed in the chief. So we had a very good meeting. My name is Josephine Claxton Richardson, and my session was looking at challenging behaviors. And the challenging behaviors that woke up presents with um, children with autism. And one of the things we looked at was not, not just some of the behaviors that were presented with them, but the strategies that can be used to work with the, the be challenging behavior. We looked at things like the PEX system, which is a picture exchange communication system. And that is where you would have a picture, and you, say you had a picture of an orange and a picture, and then the actual orange, the child then wanted the orange, they to change that, they get to change that picture for the orange. So we looked at some of those strategies. What you would do if the, the behaviour consists, because a lot of our population with autism have repetitive behaviours, and how do you deal with that repetitive behaviour? So we went over some of those things as well. And how parents can actually use some of the strategies to work right across the board. And they start with the autism, but there's other difficulties that they can actually look at, and children that probably don't have the autistic behaviour as well. We met with the parents, so we're meeting with the parents, to inform them of the need for early intervention to detect developmental delays, which can later on turn into disabilities. Um, my presentation gave them an overview of developmental delays, looking at the milestones for each age or stage in a child's development. We also looked at some disabilities, um, especially autism spectrum disorders, looking at some of the behaviors and during play, communication, language, etc. that would detect whether a child has an autistic disability or not. We also looked at behaviors and how we respond to certain behaviors that is beyond the child's control. It is essential that child find early intervention be put in place so that we can identify if there is any delays and so that those delays can be addressed whether therapeutically or educationally to provide the services that is needed that would correct some of those delays. There are some disabilities that will stay with a person for the, the entire life, but there are some that can be corrected. Our responsibilities as educators and caregivers is to ensure that the needs and the rights of that child is met to help that child work with their disability so that they can become independent and give back to society. One of the unexpected benefits of the project was the involvement of children and adults with special needs in the preparation of meals and snacks. On St. Kitts, a day's place provided the lunch and cotton thumb was comprehensive, the afternoon snacks, and on Nevis, students from the Special Education Unit prepared and served the meals. Their project committee met after the workshop and decided on the following. Training of primary school teachers on PEDS online. Grant request for phase two. Set up meeting time with top ministry officials from St. Kitts and Nevis, R-E-M-O-U. Completion of the center. Person authorized to administer the tests. 